So, George R. Robin Davis was my case manager. She was bill. Okay, forget the billing part. Also seeing my sister at the same time while I'm in the uh, program center. <laughs> Funny as a rehab. And now I'm not an addict anymore. I have an eating disorder problem. So she's charging to have me have rides to her office from the hills, which is like 45 grand a month. They charge like 150 each way. I don't know, something. Wouldn't she can number sent me one day? Uh, and so she's like, I want to do hypnosis with you. I want to do hypnosis. Like, and I was just, this is, I think what Sloan was getting at. I was just so lucky, you guys, because I didn't trust her. So now, six months in, she's like created a dirty test that I test positive for fucking opium. And I swear on my father's life and on Aussie's life, I didn't do anything. After I ordered the Xanax to that joint and it got busted because of this cunt that stole my computer. It's a different story. Um, I didn't do anything. I, like, I, I, I can't be inauthentic, you know? I was, like, sponsoring two girls at that time. I had gone through the steps with my sponsor. I was, like, you know, maybe on the ninth step or something. I was, like, six, seven months in. I was never one, whatever. Let's get to the point. I think what Sloan was saying, oh, this woman, Georgia Robin Davis. So I was anorexic. I, I had sustained not abstaining from food and not putting my fingers down my throat for longer than I've been an adult in my whole life. Like, I was dancing professionally when I was 11 years old. I started to do ballet when I was like three. And then I minored in dance at University of Miami. English creative writing, double minor in dance and sociology. But, uh, so she's like, I didn't, and especially when she's this woman, Georgia, I didn't even know a, a lot about family structures. And if you don't, you know, you may or may not know, she's like, you were the golden child. And I'm like, I feel like that's not right. I feel like I've always been the scapegoat, not even having a, being very ignorant to what these terms meant in family systems, you know, like psychological family systems. So I was like, that doesn't feel right. She's like, you had an older brother. And I'm like, yeah, but he wasn't really in the picture for a while. Like, didn't you just really kind of, kind of was the golden child over here, you know? I was like the bad kid, you know? Anyway, I don't want to subscribe to the labels, but this woman was like, all fucking weird when she wanted to do hypnosis. She was like, well, do you want to do hypnosis with me or with someone else? Like, do you trust me? She fucking knew. This woman told me she was a Wicca, by the way. Jordan Robin Davis. Georgia, excuse me, Robin Davis. She's a fucking witch. Um, and she has zero power over me. She has zero power over me. She has zero power over me. Georgia Robin Davis will eat and and tenfold anything she's ever tried to put on me. Georgia Robin Davis will eat and take back tenfold anything she's tried to do to me. Georgia Robin Davis will take back and suffer tenfold anything she's tried to put on me. Or She's a crazy fucking bitch. Anyway. <laughs> Find out more at Yelp.com. Georgia Robin Davis. Anyway. Um, bum, bum, ba, ba, ba. I'm sorry. I'm tired. I wanted to finish one story though. It was. The, um, oh. So this bitch has me now like schlepping to her office at 150 uh you know a a pop with the fucking guy who pops his heart on on my back the tech 
told my sister about that and specifically mentioned breaking cold silence and she was like fawning over Paris Hilton um, before Paris Hilton was on her show. Um, ba, ba, I have that song in my head. You guys don't know it. It's, a, it's not Coldplay. It's um, Clarence's I, um, album... Anyway, um, oh, so she's like, she was such a fucking weirdo. It was like, when inauthentic fucks meet authentic real people, it becomes like a spiritual kind of chess game, but it's all, uh, I think I need lip gloss. That's what I keep saying. <laughs> no, you can't see me in there. It becomes like a, a game of like spiritual sort of like chess, but we always win because we're always playing with God. We're light, you know, like we don't have uh, mischievous, devious intentions. My, my superpowers only go to survival to keep me safe so I can always help my friends and that I will always have a home. My superpowers are to keep me safe, that I will always be able to help my friends and I will always have a home. My superpowers are so that I can keep safe, that I will always be able to help my friends, and that I will always have a home. So, when you meet it like a, someone like me, when you meet like an inauthentic person, there's every cell in your body just knows it. So this is like seven months down the line, you know, the, anyway. It's just a fucking racket, but I can't say anything. Just like Sloan said, I was literally held hostage. And um, she was like, well, we need to do uh, for the nurses, right? You can just like that. And I was like, okay, sure. I mean, like, every time I went to her office, I just kind of, like, zipped up my armor and was like, I right, buckle up, you know, like I didn't trust that bitch for anything. I still don't. I don't, I think it's illegal. I know that there are lawsuits against her from somebody that has opened their own practice, but worked there that I lived with, like Howard Samuels owned it. He slept with three girls that I know that were in, that were patients there at the time. Whitney's aware of all of this. Um, so she's like, well, if challenging me, okay, so every time I went to her office, like, I would just, you know, ride there, and, um, like, sometimes just talk, whatever, you know, like, sometimes listen to her shit, and about her son, she has a son named Hunter, Hunter's car, and then she loved talking about her witch shit, she was really into Game of Thrones, and she liked talking about her witch shit. And a lot of times, if she was, like, wanting to talk about herself, I was just like, cool. <laughs> you know, like, I gotta fucking survive right now. Um, so, she's like, she, I walk in one day, and she's like, so I, I want to, I need, or want, whatever the fuck the verbiage was, to put you under hypnosis for your eating disorder. And I was like, Thin. I had lost weight and I was psyched about it because I gained weight like when I first got here and I was like okay and she's like well it's only gonna work if you trust me like do you trust me to do hypnosis on you like challenging me like maybe she didn't say it like that but that's how my gut felt and I was like yeah I trust you I mean, like, you know what I mean? It's like that kind of back and forth where it's like, why would you ask me if I trust you when you know I have the chills all over right now? Ten years later now, thinking about that, sitting on that crazy bitch's couch, when you know more than me how much you're fucking screwing me and trying to, like, do whatever the fuck you're trying to do. So I had, by them... They always made excuses to keep me there, you know? By there, by that point now, I had lost too much weight. And verbatim, before she put me under hypnosis and I told her that I trusted her, 
um, before she put me under hypnosis, uh, she goes, you don't need to lose any more weight. Like, I would go, you know, I was going to eating disorder meetings, so I had eating disorders, all that shit, like, I, I get tired just fucking with eating that shit, to be honest, I'm sorry. But, um, what I think Sloan meant, and I also got emotional, it was fucked up. So I told her I trusted her, and I also, okay, not only this, I remembered from, like, a group that she did, like, she came in, like, did a group in the reparenting center, and she said how she hypnotizes people, and she watches their bellies rise and fall, and once she sees their bellies rise and fall is when she starts to insert suggestions into the left hemisphere. So knowing, thank God, yoga and stuff, and belly breathing, and remembering that, I just lied down on her couch and just made my belly get big and small. The bitch told me... Okay, so let's just reframe to remind. I was too skinny at this point. I needed to start eating more. They wanted to put me on like a three meal a day thing and all this other shit, like... Um, I was going to eating disorder meetings three times a week. I was now with a eating disorder sponsor and going through the steps in OA, which is called, which is Overeaters Anonymous. And, um, so she thinks I'm under hypnosis. I'm lying down and I'm like letting my like, belly go up and down and I'm not blinking my eyes. She's like, next time, do the second helping, you just say no. Next time, they offer you a second cookie, you just say no. You don't need a second serving. I was like, She's not like a hot Hollywood psychiatrist. She looks like a gnome on a gnome's best day. She's as wide as she is tall. She's a fucking... You can see the spiritual grossness. It oozes out of her eyes and her mouth and just her whole auric field. The best you get out of Georgia Robin Davis is this super superficial pretending to be nice it's like i don't know her son's name she, she like made her own episode and like a spell work she's crazy my stomach just has to let go of a lot of stuff but oh just to wrap it up my mind was absolutely in uh Jeopardy, if you will, and then they, a few people have said that Whitney wanted me as a sacrifice, and it didn't work. My dad has died. My mom is dying. She, um, it's so, but it's like real. But what uh, Sloan was saying is uh, interestingly related to the last video that I uploaded about fucking Dr. Romney, how they'll talk to like everyone you know, and then all of a sudden like exchanges will just go weird. My sister told everyone that would listen that I was a drug addict and not to give me money. All I was trying to do was survive, and then when I met Patrick, my husband who's in heaven, she like got very weird about that, which makes sense with narcissistic, narcissistic stuff, but the whole two years my dad was dying, it was just me alone, like she made sure I ran out of every penny that I had, and
phone was absolutely correct that my mind and my soul are going to where I am. The good guys won. I went to the back. And he is the sole reason I am here. And I think the only reason that I continue, and for me, my daily motivation in continuing is to be of service to my dad, to be of service to myself, and to live a really happy life, and to be of service to anyone else that should need that. I was put in a good drug spot. I'm listening to my father. Okay, bye. I don't even know how the audio is coming.